It's a rainy day in the city of Lagos. Of course, uh, this is Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. Well, for the Arsenal fans, they all look forward to the EPL starting off pretty soon. And yesterday was the kickoff or the restart of the English Premier League. And it all ended in tears for the Arsenal fans. Three goals to you know they lost to Manchester City. And uh, as usual, we had a whole lot of calamity coming from the Arsenal players. And before the game, we saw Arsenal fans quite optim optimistic and of getting something against Manchester City, but then uh, in Pigeon they say Manchester City changed them for them, and that's what happened at the end of the day. I've got to call Lua Debari right here, and uh, he's wearing black. <laughs> he's obviously mourning Arsenal. So, justice for Arsenal, Dr. Lua. Honestly, justice for Arsenal, because mm. what was that last night? It was, it was terrible. Now, I'm definitely mourning them. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was a terrible performance. Um, I expected better, but mm. you know what, that's football. I was so disappointed in Mikel Arteta. Mm. First of all, he showed his lack of faith in the players. Mm. From the get-go, he knew that they could not come away with maybe just a point, yeah. not even a win. So, you know what, the selection of players just showed that, you know what, I'm looking forward to the remaining fixtures to try and fight for Europe. I know that this is three points gone already. Just look at the selection. Number one, no Mr. Ozil in the squad. Mm -hmm. He did say Ozil was not injured, but simply due to tactical reasons. And we could see what um, the absence of Ozil did in the team. There yeah. was no form of creativity. No one was able to link up play at all. Look, Joe Willock is a young prodigy, but he's not there yet. Still very raw. And as far as I'm concerned in Arsenal, if there's no Mr. Ozil in that hole, you expect to see Danny Ceballos there. Mm -hmm. But due to the injury worries of um, Lucas Torreira, Ceballos has to play as one of the holding midfielders beside either Granny Xhaka or Guendouzi. We saw last night that it was with Guendouzi because Xhaka did go off early. From the get-go of the game, you knew that Ateta set up this team to defend and soak in pressure. We could see Pablo Mari, a left-footed centre-back, Kieran Tierney, and Granny Jaka in the midfield. So, you know, you've got three left-footed players being able to possibly track number one, Riyad Mahrez, um, Gabriel Jesus, and an overlapping Kyle Walker. On the other side of the field, we saw a fit again, thankfully, Hector Bellerin. Mm. We saw on the right side, um, Gwenduzi, who is good at man-marking as well. And then he put Bukayo Saka on the right wing, who would also help to track an overlapping Benjamin Mendy. So, I mean, and the structure of the team, they just kept falling back. They maintained a certain structure. They tried to possibly break play between a Manchester City's um, triangular approach to every yeah. match because it always seems that whenever Manchester City is with the ball, they just seem to have more players than any other team. That was the approach. They kept sitting back at first. So they were, basically, they wanted to go away with a draw. They wanted to avoid a defeat. It was going well at first. We could see that because they were calm under pressure. Yeah. They were playing well. But immediately the injury started rolling in. Number one, Granny Xhaka went off. You then bring in Danny Ceballos, who is not primarily a holding midfielder. Mm -hmm. He wants the ball at his feet. We saw the gap he started leaving in the midfield. He now left a young Guendouzi there all on his own to start tracking players, to start tracking the ball. That was the first mistake. Pablo Mari sadly went down injured. You now brought in a David Luiz, who right now has to be the worst player on the planet. <laughs> I mean, but then David Luiz on the bench, looking at what Pablo Mari was already doing. Fine, we're playing football from the back. When you play football from the back, you need to be safe. Play safe football. You have the ball at your feet. You don't have options. You return to your goalkeeper and you provide an option for your goalkeeper. Immediately, David Luiz stepped onto the pitch. It's like he wasn't watching the match at all. He got the ball. He started looking for a way to dunk in those long passes. That was not going to work because Manchester City's offside trap was perfect. Yeah. Bukayo Saka was caught offside three times. Um, Obama Young was well matched with pace with Kyle Walker. And Eric Garcia, before he went up, was very much up to the task. So I wonder, why are you throwing the ball up in the air? You have an Eddie Kentia who is the front man, but he's not great in the air. So what are you doing? I mean, it was just simply calamity everywhere. <laughs> now, first of all, just look at that goal. Simply basic mistake. Why wouldn't you have the whole of your body behind the ball? Mm -hmm. If you don't want to control the ball, at least attempt to kick the ball. He just stood there in a very bizarre manner, mm. <laughs> let the ball in at the back of the net. Second half, I mean, first of all, he went and put on Pablo Mari's boot. I wonder why he did that, maybe for superstitious luck. <laughs> and then just look at the mistake. The same thing he did with Mo Salah at the beginning of the season. Mm. He did that with Riyad Mahrez. You, that is the last player. Obviously, any contact with the last player is 
going to be a straight red card. Mm -hmm. Why would you do that? And then you then start acting like you don't know what is going on. I mean, that was simply ridiculous. David Luiz now is one player that has caused the most goals, the most penalties. Mm. And uh, I mean, crazy. He's a legend. On, uh, <laughs> He's a legend. I mean, it's simply ridiculous. Mm, yeah. Absolutely ridiculous. Mm, but I mean, Mikel Ateta, mm. he should have put a better approach to the match. But true, you can tell the pain from Okpe as an Arsenal fan. He's really, really hot. He was really optimistic that Arsenal could get something yesterday. But of course, David Luiz was, um, I think he still felt they were in a lockdown and was doing the giveaway for um, the Manchester <laughs> City players. But like I say, uh, of course, um, for Obama, he was left isolated while Manchester City quarantined Arsenal. Three goals to nil. We have Jide Ladik was standing by and Arsenal fan. What's going on? Well, where do we start from? <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> Every, I mean, I have to pick out some, some key points here. Um, David Lewis' inclusion, or rather, is uh, coming into the game. Then, Arsenal set up from the beginning to the end of the game. And Aubameyang was somewhat left isolated. Uh, we, we'll get to talk about Aubameyang, his gameplay yesterday, and, of course, his transfer uh, saga. And the injuries, why did we have lots of injuries for Arsenal? I mean, they had a whole lot of time with the whole lockdown to stay fit and healthy to come in strong for this game. But I'd like to get your own opinion on everything. I mean, look, let's understand one thing about football. Um, when you don't play for a while, your body, it takes a toll on your body. And hence the reason why the substitutions has been changed from three to five. Uh, the, premiership, the Premiership board knew what they were doing when they were doing that. Mm -hmm. um, so when you look at the whole um, philosophy around football, people think that when you don't play, like you are refreshed. But it's not always like that sometimes. When you're, you know, lacking match fitness, your body is a setting where you get on the pitch and knock here and there, and then it's like, you know, you just go down and you're not able to get back up and, and play as you as you can. And we could see that from Shaka and Pablo Mari, and that really had a huge effect on the game. Um, look, beyond that, if there's something we've learned yesterday, is that Arsenal has a score problem, and that needs to be addressed in the next transfer window. When I looked at our squad yesterday, they were playing a 4-2-3-1. They were obviously trying to play safe. Um, Playing from the back was there, but 4 2 3 1, they were playing two solid holding defenders and uh, midfielders. So they were trying to go for, you know, let's not concede and see if we can score. But once Shaka and um, Pablo Mari went off, the bench wasn't deep enough. Who were you going to bring in? You know, the Calamity um, Lu uh, Luis. And you know, hence the reason why, you know, the match ended the way it did. Because once that red card was, was placed on Arsenal, it was game over. Hmm. Yeah, uh, of course, I like the angle you took it from, uh, talking about the Arsenal setup. Now, you talk about injuries and uh, players not playing for quite a long time. Arsenal is not the only club that went into a lockdown. We saw Manchester City, we also saw Aston Villa and Sheffield. We also saw games in the German Bundesliga and, uh, of course, uh, the Copa Italia. We didn't have as much injuries as Arsenal had in just one day of playing football. So, who's, who's, whose fault is this? I talk about Arsenal's bench. Um, why would you start your game with the likes of Bukayo Saka, Willock and the likes? What happened to Lacazette, Ozil and um, Nicolas Pepe coming into that game? Again, you know, we really don't know what happens in the background. Um, you know, there are a lot of things that happen in the technical setup that we as fans or as analysts don't, do not really know. Uh, we we want the best players to play, but if that player is not fit enough to play at that point, and you know someone like Mikel Arteta is, he doesn't hold back his words and he doesn't hold back his philosophy. He plays the best players, you know, in the best positions at the best times. So if he's looked at a player and goes like, "Oh, you are not fit enough to play in this game," then there's no reason why he wants to play him because he has played well in the past. Uh, I felt, and I agree with Okwe, you know, if Ozzy was on the pitch yesterday a bit of creativity would have been put in there because Obama Young did not receive any kind of service yesterday. He was very frustrated. I remember one time that um, Mustafi was trying to come come up from the back and he could have just placed the ball to the left for Obama Young to chase it. And he just went for the other pass. And Obama Young was visibly frustrated. You could see it. He was like, what are you doing? You know, you should have passed the ball in there. So he didn't receive any service yesterday. Ozzy would have done a lot of good if he was on the pitch. But then again, we do not know what form a lot of these players are on. It's been three months since the lockdown now. Uh, a lot of things have happened. They've not been training regularly. Uh, so it's let's just wait till the next couple of games to see you know the real true picture of the fitness of the players. I wouldn't jump to any conclusions at this point. As an Arsenal fan, am I disappointed? Yes. But I wouldn't jump to any conclusions.
True. Um, looking at Obama Young's situation now, he hasn't signed a contract yet, and he said signing a contract or the contract decision he's about to make will be the biggest of his entire career. Now, we saw the game yesterday. I mean, there was no ginger. There was no um, zeal from Aubameyang because he wasn't getting the service from the players like he should have been getting when he sees the likes of um, Ozil on the football pitch. Do you think this would prompt him to leave the club or do you think he just might stay back at Arsenal to help the club? Here's two things that I think will happen. If Arsenal is ready to commit to buy football players, um, I think it would stay because Arteta said this morning, and I quote him in a statement, he said, we haven't been able to do or achieve the results we wanted in the last three years. There's a reason behind it. And if we stand still, obviously the gap will get bigger and bigger. I've not come here to be part of that or accept that. That's the statement. I quote him. You can go online, you see him saying that. Yeah. So he's a very ambitious manager. And if he buys good football players that can complement people like Aubameyang, why not? He can finish off his career in Arsenal. He's 31. But if they're not ready to buy, you know, like they've not, you know, they've not really done that over the Wonder years and even going, going into the Emery years as well, they just bought like two or three players. If, if, they, if they don't do that, they shouldn't expect him to stay. And I think the common sense approach would be, if you're not ready to do that, then sell him on and use that proceeds to buy a couple of good football players. We still have some good strikers in Arsenal. Martinelli is one of those players that I have a huge respect for. And I think in the future, it could be the next Thierry Henry for Arsenal if he finds a coach that really believes in him. So that's my, um, my take on that. If he's not going to buy players, or if the club is not going to buy players, then why should he stay? Uh, he's going to go. But if they are ready to buy players and if the contract is, is making sense for him, why not? He can stay. All right, uh, thank you, Jide, for speaking with us. And I just hope that Arsenal has, um, will get to see better days in the EPL. I mean, like eight matches, I, I just hope they get through with straight victories in those ones. All right, uh, thank you very much. And of course, as always, uh, continue to stay safe out there. I mean, there's a lot of pain uh, from the Arsenal fans right now. I really don't know how to console uh, the team. But of course, uh, Mikel Arteta, the head coach of Arsenal, um, also said something about uh, David, uh, David Lewis. Let's listen and when we come back, we'll continue with our analysis right here. I don't know what would happen with his contract. Um, I know what happened today. I know the way David reacted. Because I know him well, not as a player, but as a person as well. He can handle the situations and... There was a reason why I didn't select him from the start. And uh, he had to play because Pablo got injured. He always going to try to give you his best, whether the condition that he's at. And he's tried again. It didn't work out for him or for the team. But, uh, that's it. Do you think coaches tend to hide, or rather they, they shoot from the truth? They don't, they don't want to come out and tell us exactly what it is. You think um, Ateta is being sentimental towards David Lewis? Um, to the public, it seems that way. Mm. But trust me, I know Atleta is going to give him the hardball. I'm sure mm. he definitely did that number one at, at, at halftime and at the end of the match. I mean, David Lewis considered four penalties already this season. I mean, giving away four penalties, received the most red cards already. Mm -hmm. No player has made more errors in the Premier League than David Lewis. So obviously, Atleta knows what he's doing with the team. There's a reason why he immediately asked for Pablo Mari when he joined mm. in um, September. So, I'm... Number one, he doesn't even want David Lewis in the setup. He has yeah. tried as much as possible to incorporate him into the team to see a way in which he could fit in. We know that David Lewis loves to have the ball at, at mm -hmm. his feet. We know he loves to fling those passes. But when we don't have six foot plus center forwards, David Lewis cannot be doing that. He mm -hmm. needs to pass the ball on the ground. He needs to guide the ball. He needs to concentrate for 90 minutes. Simply, simply horrendous. Right now, I feel like having uh, Callum Chambers back or Rob mm -hmm. Holding would yeah. have been much better. I mean, though Callum Chambers got that injury, he was playing fantastic football. I would have rather had Callum Chambers in the team at that time rather than Mustafi. Now Mustafi has learned his mistakes. He has grown into the game. He was Arsenal's most decent player last night. Yeah. And I mean, that's the squad and Mustafi that was hated by most Arsenal fans. But sure. then he has grown into the pressure. W. Lewis is 33 for crying out loud. He's well experienced very versatile. That's not the David Lewis that I saw at Chelsea, Chelsea or at PSG. So I'm really wondering what is happening, what has gone wrong for him. I'm really just thinking maybe he should go to the synagogue like Angel Gomez oh, did. Wow. <laughs> uh, maybe he should go there. <laughs>